Violence is raging in Syria, where more than 100,000 are reported dead. Bashar al-Assad's grip on power is tightening, and today his regime is lashing out at the U.S. for providing arms to the rebels. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Martin Dempsey, is responding with five potential options for U.S. military in intervention, but each comes with a multi-billion dollar price tag. Let's break it all down with Zudi Jasser from the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Zudi, so the first option is basically to train and advise them, and it comes with a price tag of half a billion dollars a year. What do you think of this option? Well, I think it's something we've already started doing and we need to do with a clearer strategy. And I think it's something we have to do because doing nothing has proven, Melissa, to be the costliest thing to the American taxpayer. Doing nothing has empowered Iran and Hezbollah and puts at risk those chemical weapons to be put into the hands of Hezbollah and risk then necessitating, as he puts in his fifth option, the need for thousands of American troops in Syria to protect those. So I think we need to train the opposition, empower them. And then he goes into some others, which I would look more than options it's simply stages of more yeah. uh, engagement from the Americans. I mean let's walk through that for our audience that the next level up would be option two and it talks about conducting limited standoff strikes the use of lethal force to strike targets that enable the regime to force hundreds of aircraft ships and submarines and other enablers um, the impact of this could be significant degradation of the regime's capabilities. Do you think, and this comes with a price tag of billions, what do you think about this option? Well, I think the rebels, obviously, the first thing they need is the ability to defend themselves, especially with anti-tank uh, type uh, weaponry and more uh, arms. But after that, then what happens? Aleppo is a good example. Recently, they took back West Aleppo from the fact that they had lost it because they were pounded from the air, they were pounded from artillery, and now they took it back. So what's going to happen is continued back and forth unless we provide for them some limited support in these uh, ultimate, uh, uh, from the, the weaponry that we have. Because we don't want to hand them, Melissa, anti-aircraft missiles and, and other things. We, If those are going to be used, we need to use them ourselves from outside Syria and protect the rebels. Well, that's why option three is a step up for that. It talks about establishing a no-fly zone, but it comes with a price tag of a billion dollars a month. Um, this would involve using lethal force to prevent the regime from using military aircraft to bomb and resupply and extending the air superiority over Syria. What about this option? Well, well, there's no doubt that that option is uh, um, very important to have because you need, at some point, we may need to protect the rebels from the air, from the, from the bombing and bombardment that they're doing with helicopter gunships, with uh, aircraft, et cetera. But there are those that say that it won't be that helpful because most of the, the civil war that's happening is on the ground. But again, if we're going to mm. protect the movement of chemical depots and others, it may end up needing some air action, just as we did in Bosnia, et cetera. And remember, the longer this goes on, the more radicalized millions of Syrians are becoming. Europe, the EU recently just said that Syria has become the largest source of global terrorism from Europeans going to Syria and also Syrians coming to Europe. So this is something the no-fly zone, while it's a billion dollars a month, as yeah. General Dempsey says, is going to possibly short-circuit the civil war to bring it to an end quicker and end the humanitarian costs that are also costing the taxpayers a lot of money. Would it be better, though, you know, for about the same price of a billion dollars a month to establish buffer zones? That's the fourth option. Yeah, I think actually the buffer zone part is very important because, you know, one of the main complaints you hear from people like Senator Paul and others is that, well, they're not unified, they, they could be Al-Qaeda, et cetera. The bottom line is the generals said yes yesterday they're declaring war also on Al-Qaeda and the Free Syria Army, but they need places to organize, they need places to be trained, and those buffer zones would allow them to do that. Every time the Free Syria Army tries to come together and strategize, they get bombed and they're separated, and that's what the buffer zones would allow. Unfortunately, I've been very disappointed that not only General Dempsey, but the president especially, has not laid out a strategy of how these are not simply options in a vacuum, Melissa, yeah. but they actually need to be looked in a context of an entire strategy for Syria. So you want to do all and these this things. Exactly. One, one would lead to the other, because if we don't, 
That fifth most expensive one of protecting the chemical weapons will have to be done when Hezbollah gets its hands on it. So the cheaper thing to do is to have a bigger strategy and to lay out for the American people what happens and the cost of doing nothing versus the cost of having a global strategy in Syria regionally to protect Israel, really? to protect the good people on the ground. Yeah, I, I mean, when we look at all of these, they come with a huge price tag. What do you think is the cost of doing no nothing? The cost of doing nothing is giving Iran the green light to say that it can own Syria, giving Iran the green light to mobilize Hezbollah into doing whatever they want and spreading terror back into Lebanon and threatening Israel and feeling empowered to do that. And then also continuing to allow Syria to become the biggest factory of terrorism around the world and the cost humanitarian with three to four million refugees now in Turkey, Jordan, and internally within Syria, we're going to be paying for that morally because that's what America does. So the military component will decrease our humanitarian costs also. Wow, tough choices. Zudi, thank you so much. Anytime, Melissa, thank you.